All right. Uh, good evening one more time. Uh, we just uh, started our live broadcast on YouTube. Uh, so if you please can confirm that you're able to hear me well and everything is okay, and we about start then. Great. Uh, one more time. Um, which cities and countries uh, we've got today? Uh, I saw Mexico, like uh, London, uh, Dubai, Australia, Portugal, Barcelona, Oxford. Uh, great. Any more cities or countries? Um, feel free to share your location. Today we have a special uh, workshop about um, finding investment for your startup in in this current situation, um, we have a group of invited experts and guests, and uh, we will speak uh, regarding how to um, uh, you know what expect to see and how how to to change maybe your approach in terms of your investment search in the current situation. So uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions. Um, as uh, uh, at the previous sessions, we had the same. So all your questions, we as to the best question. So please, uh, today we select the best question and the best question uh, get a special prize in the end of the session. So, um, just a quick overview uh, what we're going to uh, speak today. Uh, so, again, um, uh, the main topics about uh, what, when do you need investment and what for, how to find the right investor for your startup, and what's investment strategy, how to make um, your startup attractive for investments, and how to evaluate your startup, investment agreements, exit strategy, how to protect your startup assets and uh, how to make sure you did great exit or maybe successful exit. What is the hidden um, side of investment? Welcome, Germany. Um, and real startup case studies. We have uh, startup founders uh, joining our session today. So uh, please uh, stay uh, till the end and uh, real case studies uh, from our startup guests uh, will be presented. And definitely Q&A session. Feel free to ask any questions. We select the best question today in the evening. Um, best question, get a special prize. And uh, feel free to ask any question regarding the investment for startup. Any, all the questions will be answered. Even uh, we won't be able to cover it after. Um, during the session, we will reply afterwards on our Elegant Club website. Um, so yes, uh, please feel free uh, to ask any questions you want to. Uh, we have the group of special guests uh, today. Let me uh, show you uh, the panel. Uh, uh, 10 special people are joining uh, from uh, seven countries. And as we see, it's it's very international group today uh, um, uh, joined our session. I see uh, Spain and uh, yes, uh, let me introduce uh, myself first, and then we about to start. And as I said, feel free to ask uh, any question uh, regarding the funding investment for your tech startup. Uh, so um, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Slav Bernovsky. I'm a serial entrepreneur, founder of Allergen Club, an accelerator program for digital tech startups, uh, entrepreneur residence of Brunel University, London, and international speaker, mentor of Halt Founders Lab, international of international business school in london you can find me online across all the social media you also can take a look um at um you also can take a look at our social media channels instagram twitter whatsapp group facebook linkedin email and uh yes feel free to ask any questions and uh should i put a question Free, uh, please, Adam, feel free to ask right now. Uh, we summarize all the questions uh, during the session. And we have a special Q&A session where our uh, invited guests will be able to answer. But feel free to publish it right now in order to make sure we captured it uh, before. So uh, first of all, uh, let, me introduce, uh, let me introduce our first uh, guest, uh, invited guest, uh, from uh, Lisbon, from Portugal, uh, Richard Wallman. 
And uh, Richard, I just made you presenter. If you can double check your camera and uh, please uh, let me know when you're able to speak. Um, yes, we can, we can share the presentation afterwards. Uh, while we are waiting for Richard, uh, please uh, feel free to ask any questions. And uh, as I said, we are going to capture. Uh, okay, Richard, hello, good evening. Uh, maybe you can double check your sound. Uh, it's, uh, I cannot hear your sound, so I guess our guests cannot hear you as well. So, yeah, can, can you double check? It's not appearing yet. Maybe uh, just uh, double check your microphone or mute, unmute your uh, sound. Nope, nope, nope. Um, please double check your, your sound because it's not, uh, we cannot hear it yet. So yes, uh, we are waiting for Richard. So yes, uh, not yet. We cannot hear you yet. So, um, um, can can you double check your your microphone? I'm looking at it now. We, you yeah. coming? Am I coming through? Yes. Fantastic. Richard, okay. uh, please introduce yourself. And uh, Richard, our first guest uh, from uh, Lisbon, Portugal. Richard, I have a special question to you. Um, uh, if a uh, question uh, about investment, do you think it's a good time to find investment for a digital tech startup or it's tough time? We probably should focus on R&D. And what do you think about the current situation in this year in particular? Um, well, I can say um, I have invested two days ago in a tech startup. So um, as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a good opportunity at the moment. I think uh, whilst everyone's sitting at home, uh, thinking through their plans in detail um, and taking stock of the situation. I think it's an excellent time uh, for companies to get ready to uh, to be geared up to get back into action uh, in two, three, four months, however long it takes before this, this virus is uh, resolved. So, yes, I think it's a great time. Right. Uh, if you well care. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you think? Uh, which startups can be attractive for investment this year? Uh, maybe which sectors or which directions uh, entrepreneurs should look at uh, right now or this year in particular? Well, I, that's a big question. I've got no idea, to be honest. Um, I'm interested in the entertainment sector, uh, more than particularly films. Um, uh, uh, home entertainment uh, and um, ticketing for events. That's that's the area I'm actually looking at at the moment. Uh, so I suspect those areas are going to have some pent up demand ready to be released very soon. Uh, it's difficult to for, for filming to take place at the moment, but there's certainly hungry demand from all those people sitting at home uh, watching Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. Um, other areas of tech, um, I'm no expert on at all, to be fair. Um, but I imagine this is a great time for people to be um, uh, making sure everything works per perfectly and getting their plans in order with the pressure taken off them from the day-to-day -day activities of, of business. Uh, great. Thanks a lot, uh, Richard, for your answer. And uh, one more question, please. As you mentioned that you just invested um, uh, some funds to um, uh, startup. So uh, what makes a startup attractive for investments? What do you think the success factors um, giving you a confidence to invest in certain company? Well, to be fair, I've been watching this company for the last couple of years since they first set up. Um, I've been reviewing their management accounts, uh, their, their marketing strategy, their brand strategy. Uh, I've been studying the market they're, they're entering, uh, the competitors, uh, and um, I've taken a non-executive position on the board, so I'm very au fait with what their plans are and how they're approaching things and the, the advice they're getting from other experts in the field. So I'm, I'm very confident with the, the steps they've taken um to to invest in them right uh well richard thanks a lot and i guess uh, we have a special question to you as well if a business plan which a template investors most prefer if there is any template or 
how the, the business plan should look like? What what startup sent you before? Um, personally, I, I, I'm I'm not wedded to any particular template. It it's for me, it's more getting to know the people behind the ideas uh, and feeling confident uh, that they know what they're doing and they've got a, a sense of reality about them um, and that they aren't working in a vacuum, that they are fully aware of their environment and they're, they're getting good advice, uh, whether it's financial or marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So, I, I just like to know that the people I'm dealing with are fully switched on um, and have got their feet on the ground as well as having great aspirations. So um, I'm not so worried about the business plan as long as they can explain it to me over the course of an afternoon exactly what they plan to do and where they're going and how they're going to do it. So is this sim the simpler the better, right? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Clear financial plans, cash flow. Cash flow is king. <laughs> Great. All right. And uh, let me, uh, uh, Richard, thanks a lot. Please stay with us. And uh, I believe more questions are coming. And we have a special pitch example today. So uh, um, I, I highly appreciate if you can give the feedback regarding the upcoming pitch example, investment pitch example from our fellow of Allergen Accelerator. Um, so Richard, thank you very much for your uh, valuable uh, answers. And I'm just about to introduce uh, Stepan Galaev. Uh, Stepan, um, if you can introduce yourself. Stepan is a, a head of our judge panel of the previous investment pitch um, day of Allergen Accelerator in November in London. So uh, Stepan, if you can join us and uh, please, if you can double check your camera. And as we see, we have the bunch of the questions about um, uh, you know how to become attractive for investment and i just made you presenter so if you can double check your camera uh stepan and um the main question how what's the strategy for this year how to become attractive startup in 2020 especially due to the current situation uh what startup founders should focus on and how you know we can make it work so um yeah i'm just uh waiting for uh stepan Galaev. Uh, so please, Stepan, if you can confirm when you're able to join and feel free to ask and answer uh, your questions in the chat. So, um, yes, um, while I'm waiting, I, I'm just about to start our presentation because there is definitely some kind of insights we can, uh, I'm happy to share with you regarding some, you know, general rules or uh, general specific of uh, finding an investor and how to define uh, who is the good investor and who who probably not the right fit for for your startup so yeah as i mentioned uh we are waiting for stepan and then in the meantime let me uh start um uh our workshop and uh stepan please let let us know when you're ready to to speak and uh yes uh first of all um uh, let's start with the basics uh, because a lot of startup founders they're looking for investments and they're trying to 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 raise uh, capital for their business but um, yes, uh, try to to start uh, with the video and audio. Yes, so we are waiting for you. So first of all, why do you need uh, investments? And uh, first of all, it's really important to make sure that you really need uh, an investment. And um, please, uh, if you're just about to find investment uh, for your uh, startup, ask yourself, why do you need this? And uh, there is um, just a few points uh, where you really need investments. Uh, and th there are a few points where when you don't need the investment and you can focus on uh, building your tech company yourself. So first of all, you don't need for investment if you can be self-funded and especially at uh, early stage where you are building your MVP or first version of your product. And when you can bootstrap and grow organically, uh, you probably don't need for investment uh, as, as long as you can. And um, also, if you're not ready, because the, what is very important to know that since you got investment around, you have the bunch of responsibilities and commitments in front of your investors as well. So the question when actually you feel uh, that you are ready as a startup founder to take investment risk, 
and to, to bring more uh, stakeholders to your company. And uh, yes, uh, answer is yes, when you need investment is uh, when you need some cash to operate and when you need to provide a rapid grow and um, when you need to reach new markets and launch new uh, products. So um, definitely uh, when you actually already uh, have some traction sales on a certain market and you're looking for expansion across international markets, yes, you need uh, to take um, for external capital. And um, again, reasons for needing investments. Uh, what, what exactly you are uh, planning to do with this capital? If even someone is stay, uh, saying to you, I'm, I'm happy to invest into your company. So why do you need, how you're gonna spend this, yeah? And um, the question, you got investment, for example, and so what's next? How you're gonna spend this money and uh, what's the proportion of expenses across your main activity? Um, so uh, let's take a look. So uh, usually uh, we have uh, three main directions uh, of your company activities. Um, like uh, product development and support and maintenance, uh, team and resources expansion when you need to hire more people uh, to fulfill the operations of your company, and uh, also marketing and sales where you need to uh, promote your product and service and you need to scale up your um, sales, basically. And uh, what is very important when uh, investors asking you, uh, you know, uh, how you're gonna spend money um, it's very important then you have balanced structure of your expenses. So if you have 100% um, money allocated to just the product development, your R&D is probably not the great, um, uh, you know, it's, it's probably not a, a great balance. Also, if you uh, spend all money on marketing and sales, uh, who is going to carry on on your, uh, again, support, on your improvement of your products and development. Um, so uh, please try to keep this uh, structure somehow balanced. So um, yeah, Stepan is joining us. So Stepan. <laughs> We've uh, made it. <laughs> yeah, we made it. So uh, please, my apologies. Uh, introduce yourself uh, and please tell us how to make startup attractive uh, in 2020, what startup founders should focus on and what advice you can give. All right, well, qu quick introduction, uh, Stefan Goliath, uh, dialing in guys from London and girls. Uh, hello, everyone all over the world. Uh, what I focus on is helping uh, angels, super angels invest in early stage companies. And answering your question, Slava, what, what would make it very attractive now? Um, I'm afraid to say it's the valuation. <laughs> you will have to be... Um, uh, you have to be open-minded, unfortunately. There's a lot of, uh, as we say, blood on the street. Uh, there's deals to be done, and uh, it's time to negotiate. And the easier you can make it for the investors, I think, the, the quicker deals can be done. Uh, from personal experience, we, we're seeing four times drop in valuation. So there's definitely a re reality check happening. And startups that were looking at 10 million pounds pre-money two months ago they're happy with two three million pounds at the moment it's tough but do you think it's probably a good sign as well it's probably uh the industry becomes a bit healthier maybe it, it was kind of the bubble no what do you think it was definitely it was it's good it's good for us uh it's not good for the startups i'm, I'm afraid it's, it's always a balance right um so I, I think if you approach the equity rounds with with a mindset I, i'm open i'm willing to negotiate i'm not going to go in with a pre-revenue startup and 10 million pounds uh valuation and, right. it, and if you're saying well, look that's the reality we're, we're going into a recession likely a depression i have to listen to what people have to offer uh and i think that open-mindedness and flexibility will win you the money right so the, the quicker you can adapt to the reality, the better. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be tough out there, but deals will be done. Right, so uh, what do you think uh, is happening regarding the current situation? Uh, are some new trends uh, happening in terms of which uh, sectors in particular get more attraction or interest from investors? Yeah. I don't know, big data or what, what, what uh, investors looking for to invest now? Uh, well, we are looking at 
conventional businesses that will survive the uh, the downtrend. So the food companies are quite hot at the moment. Uh, security, surprisingly, there will be a lot of security issues, unfortunately. Um, and anything to do with e-commerce, really. Uh, I, I think that trend of people buying shopping online will stay for a lot, a lot longer term. Uh, so if you if you have a product that can be sold directly to consumer and you can build that consumer database, that that is key. Uh, so that's th th those are the three we're focusing at the moment: food, food companies, security, e-commerce. How about remote uh, conferencing or teamwork or any sort of communication? Shall we create a competitor of Zoom or Skype? Uh, what do you think about this change? Or it, it, it will be difficult to compete with the big, big boys. Uh, I think the uh, the players out there they have billions of users already. You, you have to come up with something so unique and so different to be able to grab that market from them, and I, I think it's impossible. And it will, right. it will cost too much money. Right. Uh, what about uh, ad tech? As you know, mm -hmm. uh, schools and universities, they all should uh, move or they had to move to, yep. um, you know, remote education processes. So, and uh, I still hear in a lot of complaints that, you know, some, some schools, they really struggle to, to, to make it work. So do mm -hmm. you think that there is a need uh, for this market right now, maybe in the future? Or do you think it's a long-term trend where uh, more universities, more schools will, uh, will use remote um, methods of teaching? Definitely. Um, I, I, in fact, Slava, you, you got me there. I should have pointed out EdTech as well. That's definitely the industry to focus at the moment. Um, I'm coming from the uh, small little humble state in the north of Europe called Estonia and Estonia has been voted number one in the world for, for their education. The reason being is that we've been doing edtech from the early 2000s. When I was in school we had everything already on the fancy platforms and all the grades were digitalized and the, the parents could see what and when we're doing. Mm. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why we're so... Um, I'm not afraid to say advanced in, in, in that respect. And Estonian ed tech companies are making large moves, uh, especially in mathematics at the moment globally. There's, there's quite a few of them. Um, that that trend will will continue as something to look for. Uh, will it ever take away the human factor? I don't think so. You, you always need an element of human interaction and that teacher-student uh, relationship you need to de develop the soft skills this is something computers won't be able to do right um, so I, I think the the ed tech will be a great plugin to make delivering education and good co education in quality and and mass but it will not take away the, the human element right and uh what about the corporate sector how they uh, big companies actually you know are they struggle right now or if there is any again need or gap on the market where the big companies with let's say uh, thousands plus employers they need for mm -hmm. some solutions and as you mentioned before uh, maybe some security tools or security solution regarding the document exchange where uh, probably the google docs is not applicable for <laughs> certain companies to, uh, to exchange some sensitive data so what do you think on that how the big uh, companies uh, you know what the situation right now? What do you think? The I, I believe they they are looking for solutions. How do you uh, manage workforce from the distance? So, so mm. the accountability factor and the efficiency factor. How do you how how do you gauge that? I know for myself. Yes, I'm a self um, uh, self employed. I'm entrepreneur. I, I don't have a boss. I'm my own boss. But being locked down at home, <laughs> my productivity is probably 50%, if that. And I have a feeling that people employed, they're about the same. Right. How, how, do you, how do you check that? So it's either you make a decision, fair enough, that that's the market, that's the norm. Uh, we have to assume it's 50%. Or you find for solutions to track and check. Um, and, and, and I think corporates will be looking for that. So something related to performance management, isn't it? Yeah, performance management. And then how do you educate your staff, thousands and thousands of people, to the same standard? And how do right. you report the, the work to the same standard and maybe uh, you, you put it in a, in, in a format 
that is easily shareable and uh, between the managers, the uh, uh, employees within the team. Uh, th there is a fantastic book, and everybody probably interested in investments knows it anyways, by Ray Dalio Principles. And he talks a lot, a lot about how he built that within his uh, venture fund, uh, hedge fund, sorry. Uh, I, I really recommend it. And I think that will become the standard for every large corporation. They only employ 15, 1,500 people. But imagine if you have 300,000 people. How do you uh, how do you educate all of them? <laughs> That's right. a challenge. Uh, uh, Stepan, uh, one more question before we, we move on. Um, yeah. uh, do you believe in online pitching practices? Uh, do you talk to some startup founders online or you still need to have this physical uh, interaction before making decision to invest into a company? No, I, I think you can pitch online. I, I definitely, uh, well, we, we're doing pitching at the moment and investing online only. Uh, right. It, it's not something where it, if you're learning to play the violin without a teacher, you <laughs> cannot do it. Uh, I, I, speaking of violins, we had a startup in this sector. Um, but if it's uh, if it's an investment, no, I think you can you can build rapport with, with people just by video. Um, in, in in angel investing and venture capital, I don't think we'll have a problem. In private equity, they will have a problem because you you have to see the physical premise or, or a factory. Right. All right. Uh, just a, a quick announce and uh, uh, for you as well, Stepan. Uh, mm -hmm. On 28th of May, we, we have investment pitch day, 100% uh, remote online. Okay. So uh, you are more than welcome uh, to join us and. Uh, uh, let's hope again this uh, kind of remote uh, type of uh, uh, pitch day uh, will come through, you know, the same as we did in November. So um, thank you very much uh, for uh, for joining the session. I, I think uh, it's incredibly a uh, great time to again to see uh, which industries uh, you know have a long term um, need and demand and. Uh, uh, please, um, as I asked for Richard, we have an example of investment pitch day today from our fellow. If you don't mind to give some feedback afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, please stay with us. And thanks a lot. And I see a lot of questions coming through the chat. So I believe some people uh, would be very interested to ask you uh, some questions online via chat sure. messages. Thanks a lot, Stepan. Um, yeah, yeah uh, pleasure, pleasure to have you. And um, yes, um, let me give you a few bits of knowledge uh, and uh, thank you very much, Stepan, for your insights. As we, as a summary, uh, some um, directions as a performance management for big companies, uh, managing the employers, um, you know, making sure they perform and uh, how do, you know, it's possible to track and educate them in at larger scale. Also, ad tech as, as probably one of the long term trends as well. And as uh, Stepan mentioned, it's possible to pitch online. So uh, please, everyone, feel free to reach investors online and uh, talk to them directly. Um, so I'm just coming back to the the discussion. So uh, when uh, you pitch in uh, your investment proposal to investor, uh, please explain how you're going to spend your uh, your investments or how you're going to um, make a balance between your uh, three main activities. And uh, definitely it somehow it should be balanced. And uh, what I believe, and probably Richard can and Stepan can confirm, if uh, you you have just an idea or you don't have even revenue, um, you know, it's likely uh, not gonna happen. So investors, they expect to invest money into increasing sales and in, uh, expanding your uh, market penetration or, you know, um, making uh, more uh, sales or maybe, uh, uh, launching new products where you already have some track record of sales and revenue and um, you know you have some spend 100% of investment to R&D it's probably not gonna work and also if you're gonna spend all the money to salaries it's also not gonna work so please make sure you have allocated funds for marketing and sales activities uh, when you pitch to investor and um, 
as we discussed, uh, how to make your startup attractive for investor. Uh, as uh, also Richard said, it's it's not rocket science. Uh, probably, you know, if you simply um, can explain in, uh, you know, one minute what your product does and, uh, you know, if there is something unique in your idea, it's already a very good, uh, good uh, point. You don't need to uh, write down huge reports and uh, huge uh, market research report or uh, harm, 100 page uh, business plan nobody is going to read it so the idea is to make it as simple as possible very clean and uh, short uh, make it precise uh, in order to make sure everyone can can check it out and um, again how to make your startup attractive for investments um, this is my uh, proposal to you guys and uh, ladies uh, product team market and time uh, what do I mean by that uh, so Product is uh, it's important to make sure that product has a certain USP on the market and uh, something unique, uh, something uh, other companies cannot do or they don't have this, uh, you know, functionality or feature. And also your USP, unique selling point, um, is not easy to replicate. It's uh, tough some, by some reason. So something, you know, completely new should come in place into your startup idea or a product or service. And also team, um, how experienced and skilled are your team? And definitely, I believe, again, a Richard and Stepan can confirm it's likely if you're a sole entrepreneur, you don't have anyone working with you, uh, your investment deal is not going to happen. So it's very important to have team because if, um, you know, investor uh, put money into your company, are you scalable enough to fulfill all the KPIs and targets if you're just one person? It's not possible. So uh, definitely it's important to have a, a good uh, team, uh, advisors and mentors on board, and also, um, you know, uh, find some, some good co-founders. And definitely if you work uh, two weeks uh, only, it's, it's also not enough uh, to make a decision that your good team uh, probably you need to um, spend more time at least a couple of months or maybe a few years at least before actually, uh, you know, uh, saying that you're a good team. Market, what do I, what do I mean uh, by market? Definitely the market uh, should be big enough and uh, scalable enough. Also, it's great if you can uh, promote your product across uh, multiple markets, across international markets. And also how tough or how easy to reach the market? Is it like uh, some, you know, um, regulations involved? Maybe you need to get some license or maybe it's very expensive. Um, the question about the market and mar market research and also time. Um, again, please, Richard uh, and uh, uh, Stepan and Lars. Uh, th uh, you know, uh, good evening, Lars, as well. Thanks for joining. Uh, time. The question, uh, when exactly you built uh, your product or service and when you promote it, maybe market is not ready yet. Or maybe, uh, you know, um, there is a better moment to launch your product or service, maybe in one year time or maybe six months time. So if it's the right time, as we discussed with Stepan, then uh, now it's probably great time for ad tech startups. If you have, uh, you know, some unique product, it's amazing time because a lot of universities, schools, other, um, you know, educational bodies, they have to move to a remote, um, you know, uh, teaching uh, practices and uh, some performance, um, you know, uh, management systems, again, great time. So if you uh, make sure, if you can make sure that uh, startup is um, you, uh, suitable for a certain time frame, when exactly do you pitch uh, your idea or when you develop your product or service, it can be very, um, you know, suitable for investing. And, um, when is the best uh, place to find investors? I'm actually going to touch this question right now. Uh, Tony, thanks a lot. Where to find investments? And uh, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, my opinion on that, uh, please showcase your product as much as you can. Reach your network and uh, the information from your the previous uh, slides, uh, your personal network, your clients, your experienced um, professionals you work with, maybe some of your colleagues, 
accelerator university any entrepreneurial community events like that as you see we have investors in our room tonight and uh, conferences and uh, top leaders in the industry if you know who is the top leader or maybe some uh, investor invested in uh, particular sectors you can find out these people and reach them out uh, via TechCrunch or um, you know angel list or some conferences like uh, web summits uh, slash and so on and um, these organizations definitely they have some online resources so you can find them online and as you see now there are multiple online activities uh, like we have right now so again this is the great opportunity to, uh, for you to um, meet investors and uh, my personal advice also make research um, find uh, some relevant investors via LinkedIn, uh, Google, and um, again, some, some re relevant resources. And um, try to promote and pitch your product as much as you can because you never know, uh, maybe your customer can tell you, actually, you know what, your product is great. I'm, I'm interested to invest some capital. So um, yes, and uh, now I, I'm about to invite uh, Nelly, Nelly Orlova from Switzerland. And uh, I, I would ask Nelly as well uh, for some advice. Where do you think it's the right place to meet investor and how to make a good impression on investors, uh, how to pitch or maybe what would be the good, um, you know, starting point for, um, you know, investment discussion? Is it should be like uh, straightforward, uh, send in the pitch deck or maybe just make some personal uh, communication first or maybe some personal introduction? Um, Nelly, I just made you presenter, so if you just can double check your camera and uh, let us know when you uh, when you um, uh, you can speak. So uh, again, uh, we speak about uh, where to find investor and uh, how to make this first uh, you know uh, first discussion or how to pitch uh, properly to investor. What what would you advise to um, you know entrepreneurs who are looking for funding? So uh, we are waiting for Nelly. I just hope um, you know the connection works and everything is is correct. Yes, Nelly is joining us. If you can double check your sound, please. Uh, there is no sound yet. So uh, can you double check your microphone, please? Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Hi, Slava. Hi, everyone. Hello. So, uh, should I first introduce myself? Or Please do. Please do. Point? Please do. Okay, thank you. My name is Nelly, and I'm founder and CEO of InMind, uh, which is a professional networking platform for startup founders and investors. And if I classify our activities, I will underline three main uh, points. First of all, it is online networking platform with additional tools both for startups and investors like valuation calculator, automation tools for due diligence and uh, startup assessment, knowledge base, etc. Second is um, investment engine. So we are ourselves co-investing with angel investors, creating syndicate rounds uh, and uh, also co-investing with the lead investors from our venture partners. And the third one is um, specific events uh, where startup founders can be um, can get intensive crash course or acceleration uh, with uh, uh, mentors, with face-to-face uh, -face meetings with investors, etc. And the next one will be hopefully uh, this October. And Slava will be also invited speaker and uh, presenter and mentor there. So what was the question? Uh, how to reach investors or how to pitch to investors? Uh, where to find, how to start, what's the, the good approach, you know? Well, uh, where to find plenty of places. I fully agree with you, Slava. And, uh, uh, you know, recently um, I watched some video interview of some experts who mentioned and underlined that you should not uh, find investors or reach out uh, called uh, uh, messaging to investors in social media, especially Facebook, because it can uh, be considered as an offense. I would disagree with that completely and would 
uh, encourage you uh, to use all the available methods uh, and platforms uh, to reach out to investors. Uh, you have uh, all the social media and of course LinkedIn, uh, number one among them, I guess, uh, to reach them out. You have a lot of specific platforms like in mind, for instance, where you can meet in person uh, venture capitalists and business angels who are particularly uh, looking for startups to invest in. You can also meet them uh, at events as uh, Slava showed in the presentation and uh, uh, from uh, friends. By the way, uh, to start from, uh, we have this three F, uh, friends, family and fools. And normally for the very early seed investments, if you need some cash and don't have it in your pocket, uh, this is uh, uh, obviously the best way uh, to get the first money in. Uh, I would uh, not uh, uh, recommend for very early stage uh, startups uh, to try to approach external investors, uh, external capital uh, for many reasons. Right. Uh, what do you think about recommendations? Uh, because, uh, you know, some some investors, they say, uh, please find someone who knows you and me and uh, make sure someone recommended you as a startup founder. What do you think about this? Or um... mm, the, How to say, this is not obligatory, uh, but indeed it will help. Um, for instance, um, during the last months, we make a special... Uh, video interviews with a lot of venture investors, very big venture investors, asking them various of questions. Uh, uh, how do they deal uh, in the current situation uh, without personal meetings with startups? Uh, because, you know, as Richard mentioned, for example, he prefers to meet in person and doesn't invest in um, uh, uh, if uh, uh, he can communicate only online and other investors are absolutely freely um, invest uh, without personal meetings. But majority of investors we approached, uh, they uh, mentioned one factor that indeed recommendation uh, from uh, the network, from the trusted network uh, is uh, the main funnel uh, of startups of good deals for them. And uh, there is a reason for that, because uh, usually in the network of investors, people already know their criteria, uh, their focus, uh, their specific interests, and etc. And they would simply not recommend absolutely irrelevant startup. So I think this, um, uh, this nuance is very important. And if you don't have someone uh, who can recommend you to investor, consider that this job uh, which uh, is usually done by this intermediary uh, source, should be done by yourself, meaning you should indeed research uh, before contacting. The worst thing is when you just contact investor without even understanding of his focus, his uh, check, his investment criteria, and etc. cetera. Uh, this is actually the reason why um, majority of cold contacts uh, fail only because of that, not because they came uh, not from the trusted person. So that means you would advise to make research first about investors, uh, you know, about his or her previous investment deals, you know, the focus sector uh, uh, size of investments, uh, you know, uh, previous ones. And um, again, uh, just a picky question. What if I'm uh, just about to build my first startup? I don't know any connections. And what should I do? You know, I, I don't have any any investors in my network, for example. What what you can advise to those entrepreneurs who are just about to make first uh, startup happen? Mm -hmm. So first of all, think if you indeed need investments or not. Uh, but I think that Slav already described it in his presentation. So uh, everything was quite clear. I fully agree with what uh, you've already told. Second, if you understood that you indeed need in investments for growth capital, for expansion, for um, uh, scale up uh, the sales team and etc., cetera, uh, then uh, there are Again, plenty of resources, platforms, etc. And even if you don't want to use or uh, didn't find the right platform for you, I, I would recommend actually to uh, do everything in parallel. So both to use platforms uh, and uh, also using social media. So when uh, before using social media, uh, when you find the contact of investor, 
just Google him. There is a lot of information. Nobody is hidden in nowadays. Nobody keeps it in secret. Moreover, majority of investors, if uh, investment is uh, their professional activity, they are happy to share this information because they are also interested in relevant funnel, in uh, relevant deal flow. So uh, they are gladly giving interviews and sharing uh, their investment criteria on the websites, on their social media, etc. The best way would be to make this research, uh, then uh, maybe to, if it is called a contact, uh, to uh, look at the recent posts or interviews of this or that investor and make this cold contact uh, uh, starting from uh, referring uh, to uh, his recent interests or uh, search criteria or whatever. Uh, Nelly, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, later on, we have actually uh, the um, investment uh, pitch example, if you don't mind to give us the feedback from your perspective, from your point of view. And uh, just last uh, one more question. Um, again, uh, which sectors, which industries you think uh, investors looking now actively due to the current situation and maybe later on this year? Ad tech, uh, we already know this. Any, any other industries to consider? Well, uh, that's a very good question. And again, uh, I will not share my opinion now. I will share an opinion of investors who uh, declared it during uh, the last weeks of communication. So they, uh, in addition to EduTech, uh, they also mentioned robotics. Wow. Uh, many, many venture funds, uh, they are now uh, they are thinking uh, in uh, that uh, field because uh, obviously, uh, when you remove uh, the human factor um, in uh, similar situations, uh, it can be game changing. Also, VR, AR, uh, especially if we speak about uh, substitution of those uh, sectors which uh, are not available now. For example, for travel, VR can be a kind of uh, substitution if uh, you build a beautiful experience for people. Uh, everything around uh, uh, so-called economy for loneliness, if right. I, uh, if I uh, tell, um, name it correctly. So uh, a lot of people, are they are a kind of lonely sitting in front of their computers. And uh, uh, if you have solutions how to make their life better, um, more um, uh, inspired, etc., uh, that is a good uh, a good factor. Um, also, drones industry, but again, it is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the same as uh, robotics, uh, removing uh, a lot of uh, human power. Um, so, I would say, the, and, and of course, artificial intelligence. Uh, already for a few years, it is like in the top um, three or top five uh, of uh, sectors which uh, uh, investors pay special focus to, and it remains. Uh, 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 in the top. Right. Uh, Nelly, thanks a lot. It's a big pleasure to have you uh, with us. Uh, please stay. And um, later on, we have uh, in roughly 15 minutes, we have our pitch uh, example. So hopefully you give us some, some, some feedback. Thanks a lot. And please uh, stay in chat. Uh, pleasure to have a discussion. Um, uh, I see Derek Stewart uh, joined our session. Uh, Derek, has a track record, amazing track record of uh, previous uh, investments. And he is the winner of Investment Pitch Day in November 2019 of Allergen Accelerator. Derek, if you can join um, us and give us a few advice um, uh, points regarding where to find the first investors, um, you know, how to make the first approach, uh, what uh, early stage startup uh, founders uh, they should do now, and how to pitch how to pitch initially uh, your startup idea to in, uh, first investors, uh, maybe for first uh, seed rounds. If you can uh, join us and give a uh, few, few thoughts on that, and especially due to the current situation, do, uh, would you recommend to pitch online or again, wait for the better times? What's, what's your thoughts? So I just made you a presenter. If you can join us, let me know. Yes, welcome, Derek. Hi, Slava, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, I wasn't really expecting uh, to be joining, so I'm sitting here at home with a beer, uh, as you can see. Uh, and, uh, uh, so what I've been doing, because we're actually just about to raise our first um, institutional round, 
So we closed an interim funding round, mainly with angel investors, uh, about a month ago. And we're yeah. about to move into an institutional round. So what I've been doing is someone very helpfully posted on LinkedIn a list of about, I don't know, 250 investors that they'd surveyed that were, uh, which gave the status of how they were investing, what they were looking for, where they were still investing. So I downloaded that uh, a week ago, and I've now been through the websites of all 250 investors together with my own contacts and put specific themes. Right. Uh, and and, and so, so basically at the moment, you have no option but to pitch um, remotely because nobody can meet, so you don't have a choice. Uh, if you have enough money to last you for the next year, then I'd say it's probably a good time to to wait and, and wait till people are back communicating. But but if you need the money relatively soon and you've got an opportunities to grow, then right. I'd suggest that you, a bit like Nelly was saying and, and partly what Stefan was saying, you really need to be doing your research now and figuring out where you're going to have the, the most likelihood of getting a meeting or, or generating interest. So I listed the themes of all of these investors. So one of them was e-commerce. One of them is um, fintech for SMEs. One of them could be um, um, uh, on online selling. So there's a, so I've, I've basically taken um, all of the themes of these companies. I've looked at the portfolio where the portfolio already has similar investments to what we do, I've effectively taken them out. There's no point in going to someone now with an idea that's similar to their current portfolio because they're probably having to support their current portfolio of investments. So I do think the best opportunity now is your existing investors, if you have them. Um, I think family and friends is the next best because they'll trust you. And then really think about... Um, and do proper research because we've all got time now. So do research on all of the VCs or the investment funds before you approach them. Um, and that would be my advice. The one other piece of advice I'd say is I'm sitting here with all of these opportunities. So my background's in distressed investing. So when things get really bad, I get really excited from an investment perspective because I've now got a list of things that I want to be doing and I'm trying to accelerate them. So, right. so wh whereas we were looking at maybe raising one to one and a half million, I don't need all that money now. If I could close a, close half a million, th that will enable me to accelerate all the things that are going to generate revenue and help our business to grow. So I think it's a time to be very focused, keep your business very lean, don't hire anyone unless, if you, unless you really need them. Um, uh, yeah, and, and really do your homework on the investors. And, and be open, ask them what they're looking for. Because um, I, I do think people are looking for ideas still. Right. Right. Uh, Derek, thanks a lot for your contribution. Um, please stay with us. And uh, it's extremely valuable to have you and uh, your your comments on that. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I, um, again, would ask your uh, feedback regarding our upcoming investment pitch uh, example. And now I would like to invite our special guest from Hungary, from Budapest, uh, um, uh, Martin Elody, um, startup founder and uh, successful entrepreneur and uh, tech guy. Uh, we happily uh, met in uh, Finland, in Helsinki, I guess in 2019 or 18, actually in 2018.
And our primary product is a corporate well-being program where we offer employees in large companies a fully digital platform to access all of their insurance related benefits. Just uh, sorry, uh, I just want to make sure people are able to hear us. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, if you can, sorry. I can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Because I can yes. hear you. Yes, please. Can you double check your intro? Uh, can you repeat your introduction, please? Because uh, some people said they uh, we disappeared for 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 the moment. So okay. So, yes. All right. <laughs> Sorry for that. So good, good evening, everyone. My name is Martin Elodie. I'm the co-founder and head of product development at Vern Insurance Technologies. We are a seed stage insurance company from Budapest, Hungary, um, accelerating the digital digital transformation of the regional um, insurance industry. And currently, our primary focus is on the corporate well-being program, where we offer employees in large corporates a fully digital platform for accessing all of their insurance-related benefits. So we secured our seed round almost a year ago to date, so in 2019, April. Um, I have a few takeaways from this process that we had. Um, I think the most important part, as Nelly and, and Derek said before me, is to find the right investors and VCs. And it might sound silly, but this is this is the most important part in, in the whole process. We spent many months with uh, in discussion with VCs where we were just not the right fit for their portfolios. So essentially, we wasted half a year with with no outcomes. Right. Uh, and uh, so, in the first place, you have to see if the goals of the funders and the goals of the investors are aligned and you have a shared understanding of, of success and what the investors are expecting from you. Because this is the only way that you will be achieve what, what the investors are, are expecting from you and to make them happy. So, uh, and this is not, not only true for the time being of the fundraising, but also after that. So when you raise your fund, uh, if you are able to comply with your expectations, this could be the entry level for your for next next funding round. So I think this this is the most important part. Um, you also have to keep in mind that this process takes time. So in Hungary, it's around half a year. We had our from the first discussion until we had the money on our bank account, it was four months. So you have to have the adequate runway and the committed team. Um, otherwise you will have a really big time pressure on you and uh and and then that could make you know agree on on, on bad terms for example right um any advice you can give uh regarding how to approach investors if you uh probably again uh building your first startup you don't have enough connections uh where to find what to do how to find the right investor if you have lack of connections or maybe expertise and recognition in the market well um fortunately okay so i'm just looking if the connection is right um yeah. fortunately the list is pretty short in hungary so we could only reach out to a few vcs that that were really the right fit for our company um as you mentioned, we met in, in Finland. I think Finland is the very great example of, of great networking events, incubators and accelerators, um, where you are very casually able to meet with uh, different investors, for example, and different VCs. So I think in most of, of the cities, they have some kind of different, I don't know, meetups or pitching events. Um, this could be a right way to to have the first first meetings with uh, with investors and to make them excited about your product. Um, I personally don't really like cold calling. I'm, I'm not really good at it, but uh, for some people, it might be a working alternative as well. Um, and also for some VCs, there there is a like a call to action on their website, so you can just submit your idea, and and if they like it, they're going to reach reach out to you. So this is also an alternative that that you could use. I think. Right. And uh, what do you think? Uh, what's the current situation? Do you do you think uh, this year is a good year to, you know, f find uh, an investor or it's more for research and development or for more operational part of your startup activity? What do you think is a good to focus right now and maybe uh, later on this year? What's your advice? Well, I think investors are going to focus on keeping their best 
portfolio startups alive. So it's kind of they are they are they will select from their already existing investments the best ones they are able to 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 keep in live and keep in operations. Um, I don't exactly know how many new investments they are going to make. Uh, it's definitely a, a very hard time to find new investments uh, because of the lack of uh, of uh, live or like in person communication. Uh, but also everyone is going to be pretty. Um, like uh, not that brave with all these investments. So if you have the runway, R&D and, and market research and, and product development could be a good, a good way to, to get through this year. Um, if you don't have the runway, um, yeah, I think every, every investor will, will, try to, will, will try to keep you alive if you have the, the, the right opportunities, but this is definitely going to be really, really difficult for all of us. Right. Uh, um, thanks a lot for joining us and please stay with us if you yeah. get any comments and feel free to uh, reply later on in chat. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, please ask your questions. We record all questions and answer afterwards if even uh, we didn't manage to cover them during the session. Uh, let me give you a, few, uh, a bit of, um, again, some insights uh, from the presentation. And then we have example of uh, investment pitch. And in real time, we'll try to, to see how to improve this pitch, uh, what was good and uh, what, what can be um, you know, improved as well. Uh, so just a few points uh, about the amount of investment needed, uh, because it's very important uh, question. And uh, first question, uh, probably investor ask you, asks um, after they like your idea, you know, how much you need, right? And uh, the question, the answer is uh, no more than, no less than needed. And I think it's extremely important. And that's exactly what Derek uh, mentioned before, that um, if you need just uh, 200K for right now in order to, you know, grow or, in, you know, uh, operate uh, in your company, you, you, you probably don't need for, to ask for 1 million uh, for a certain moment. So it's need to be very realistic down to your uh, cash flow projections and down to your financial projections. And um, please uh, don't blame me. Uh, this is the just like... Um, kind of the diagram of uh, investment rounds. And definitely the figures can be slightly different from country to country, from market to market. Um, but uh, what I wanted to uh, showcase here, that uh, the stage where you probably need to, um, uh, to, to look at uh, angel investments and also VC uh, funds. So as uh, Nelly mentioned, uh, 3F, uh, friends, family, fools, uh, it's probably it's a good uh, right uh, feed when you uh, just at idea stage or it's probably even MVP stage. And um, when you just need to build your prototype, you likely probably need up to 10,000 uh, pounds, euros, dollars in order to build your MVP or prototype. When you uh, build your MVP and you need to uh, make a proper, uh, pr you know, version of your product, probably you need up to 50k something, um, you know, in order to uh, improve it, make it better. And it's still angel investment and it can be a uh, multiple investment at the same time, uh, maybe two, three, depending on, you know, how, the, you know, your progress and the down, down to the nature of your startup. And um, after, ideally, ideally, your angel money would be great um, if you manage to, uh, to start making sales and at least generate some revenue. And uh, the best case scenario for you, if you did a brick even and, uh, you know, uh, by having just angel investment only, that's amazing and great. And then um, after maybe half uh, of million or uh, one million plus, it's probably the time where you can start talking to VC funds and maybe consider some uh, VC funds. Uh, please, um, Stepan, uh, Derek, uh, fix me if I'm, uh, you know, I kind of, if you can make some corrections. But as I said, there is no point to uh, reach uh, VC funds if you just need 100K, you know, they are not interested. Definitely, you, uh, what is Anelia also mentioned, it's very important to uh, make a research and see uh, what investment size uh, 
based on the uh, previous uh, rounds. And again, uh, please ask as much as you need. Don't try to, you know, um, ask more than you need uh, because you probably can reduce uh, your equity and probably it's uh, no, not right uh, for, um, you know, uh, probably not, uh, you know, right to reduce your equity uh, earlier than you can. You can, you can spend this uh, equity later on. And uh, yes, um, seed stage opportunity. So yes, I, I just see uh, some comments. And uh, yes, uh, just a few um, moments about the cash flow, as Richard mentioned, is extremely important in order to uh, have um, very clear figures about your cash flow. And uh, please uh, make sure your projections are realistic. Uh, please don't promise uh, to make one mil uh, profit in, uh, I don't know, six months time. It's impossible. So, and uh, I guess nobody is expecting uh, that you're gonna make um, high profit in year one or even two, three. So uh, what I guess Richard mentioned is to have very clear cost structure and uh, break even. So where exactly you, um, you know, how many uh, sales you uh, make each month, um, how, what are your expenses, how much money you spend on R&D, how much money you spend on marketing expenses, and what is more, very important as well, what's, uh, when you break even, uh, when you uh, start uh, making uh, more money than you spend, uh, which months, and definitely it's great if you're able to reach break even, not in five years time, maybe, I don't know, uh, 12 months of, of operations, or maybe 18 months, but but also if you say that you're able to break even, uh, I don't know, in two months time is also probably not realistic. So again, please uh, make sure this, um, you know, uh, cash flow plan is realistic and, uh, you know, reasonable and clear. Um, types of funding, as we discussed, uh, there are a few uh, points about what types of funding we have. Uh, personal funding, 3F, as we discussed, um, so, uh, please make sure your capital at risk and there are some benefits of having the uh, personal funding available. So uh, there are no obligation, equity free, if it's your money, your pocket, now, no spending control. You can decide how much you spend and, uh, which directions you, you invest into. And, um, it's recommended to invest a limited part of your savings. Please don't put hundred percent of your savings or please don't, uh, take loans. Um, it just to build your MVP uh, because it's a risk. Uh, probably you're going to build, I don't know, 10 more startups before uh, making it successful. So uh, please make sure you, you're very careful about uh, your personal funding. But uh, it's limited and it's personal risk and uh, it uh, has a tendency to overestimate the financial outcome. So please, um, please uh, make sure um, you know you're very cautious and very picky regarding how do you spend your uh, your personal funding. Crowdfunding is an option, and it it works great uh, for B two C product for consumer products rather than B two B. And um, there are some um, you know advantages like uh, flexibility of crowdfunding. You can. Um, uh, attract as much as you want to and uh, great for consumer products because it's also a good promotion point. Um, it can be um, high high return. You can, again, fundraise a good money uh, relatively quickly. And uh, it, it gives you credibility and exposure on the market. But also crowdfunding is the place where sometimes you have to disclose confidential information. And the marketing campaign is exhausting. And uh, it's also time consuming after because you need to deliver um, to a bunch of investors what you promised so far. And also what is important, please uh, check out what's happening with those uh, startups who did a crowdfunding before and um, how many of them have successful track record after they did crowdfunding. And again, uh, please make sure um, again, um, if, if you have a B2B market is very niche, probably there is no, uh, you know, points to, um, you know, to see, um, you know, these crowdfunding opportunities and, uh, angels, as we discussed, uh, angels, uh, find someone who loves your product, uh, find someone who believes in your team. It's definitely someone very loyal to what you do. 
And um, it's relatively small amounts available by angels uh, between 10 and 100K. It's, it's a typical um, investment uh, uh, amount. And also private individuals looking uh, for alternatives uh, to invest. And um, also it's definitely someone um, uh, loyal to uh, it's someone loyal to you in your product um, and um, and someone believes in your team and uh, they can be highly engaged uh, to 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 your team and they can highly engage to, to your um, uh, to your product and it's very important for your track record of investments is to convince someone to uh, believe in 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 your in your uh, startup but um, it's it's suitable likely only for the first round, and uh, some angels they also can have lack of uh, knowledge of your sector or industry. So um, it's not always uh, means uh, that investor they have understanding what your product does and uh, how to to bring it to the next level of investment rounds. So um, uh, please make a research and make sure angels they understand what you do and they have uh, some experience in the niche or the, some some directions you work in and also um, venture capital funds um, uh, it's nothing personal it's a business so uh, definitely it's uh, more down to figures it's more down to the stage of your business it's uh, down to your uh, strategy and uh, large amounts available via VC funds, um, it gives you fast growth potential and it can also bring experienced team and some uh, extra resources like a consultant, uh, a bunch of connections, um, a good recognition of the market, uh, some further opportunities for next investment rounds. And uh, definitely the VC funds, they're looking more to profitability, to return on investment. Uh, they're probably not so loyal as angels uh, to your team or to your product because they really want to see uh, some good outcomes of your work. And also they can restrict your expenses and they can uh, restrict your um, strategy and direction, how you uh, operate your company. And so you have uh, limited flexibility regarding um, work in VC, VC funds. So again, uh, when you need larger capital, um, more than 100K or up to half a mil or even one mil funds, uh, definitely uh, please take a look at VC fund opportunities. Also, uh, please take a look at grants uh, because if your startup does uh, some uh, social impact or some, um, you know, um, some some project in ad tech or med tech or some, uh, you know, sustainability uh, type of the projects, please uh, check out which grants are available. Uh, they can be government or some uh, private grants or some uh, private funds. So uh, please uh, check out, um, it's, uh, you can make research about your, uh, down to your country, but it also can be the good option because uh, usually it's equity free and uh, there is no commitment uh, regarding the equity. Variable amounts available, um, usually it's not so large, um, you know, capital available by grants and uh, it's suitable for social enterprises. And uh, probably the advantages that uh, access to grants uh, can be time consuming and um, it calls also can be some fixed uh, terms and restrictions and also capital is limited. So it's, it's probably you need to take a look and see which grants is, um, you know, fits your needs, fits your investment needs um, rather than, uh, you know, uh, it's it's not um, maybe the right fit for every uh, startup. And also loans, uh, probably uh, feel free to ask uh, questions our uh, guest investors regarding uh, also um, co convertible loans where like you can um, convert uh, equity into loan after or some, some deals related to loans, how to make it better. Uh, but also there are some loans available from banks or, you know, if you're very confident with your um, uh, with your business, with your strategy, you also can get a loan and can be a variable amount up to large capital, uh, suitable for stable businesses, equity free and uh, limited influence over the business. 
and uh, likely it's asset based and uh, you need to you you have interest rate and it's good for long term um, uh, consideration. So again, uh, please, if you're just about to build your startup, please don't make any loan, uh, don't apply for loans. It's uh, it's very high risk. So again, it's it's great for a later stage where you have sustainable cash flow, you have enough capital um, as a backup fund in your company and so on. So uh, please uh, check it out. Uh, before I go into investment terms and conditions, so now I would like to introduce you our uh, pitch example. Um, so let me introduce our startup founder. He's a fellow of Allergen Accelerator, uh, Yazan Atari. Um, he is a founder of CoinGo. Uh, Yazan, let me make you a presenter. And uh, now we will make an example of pitch, investment pitch. Um, so please, uh, I ask our investors and, uh, in, you know, our mentors to give the feedback regarding this. And uh, Yazan, give me uh, a few seconds and um, uh, please uh, let me open your presentation. And uh, everyone, please give, give the feedback afterwards. And Yazan, just about to uh, start. Um, so, Yazan, feel free to introduce yourself first, and then we will start. So, hello, guys. Um, I'm Yazan. I'm a first-year student at Halt International Business School, and I'm the founder of CoinGo, the, a digital banking solution. Right. Um, just uh, let me uh, open the presentation. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so CoinGo. So we are uh, the first independent, we're hoping to be the first independent digital bank in the MENA region, which is the Middle East and North Africa. We aspire to change the way we bank by utilizing advanced and upcoming technology and software that creates a customer centric and highly personalized experience. So the, the problem we're facing currently is that the traditional MENA banks are becoming less customer friendly and do not aim for financial inclusion. They are very specific in their target audience. And our solution for this is creating a customer-centered digital bank that allows its customers to have more control over their bank account and how they use it, and to get rid of the conventional credit cards and replace it by utilizing contactless payments and uh, NFC rings. Uh, it's supposed to be a video, but I don't think it's loading. It's quite heavy, so probably you can postpone it. Sure. So the main features of CoinGo is that we have uh, multiple currency accounts, so you're allowed to have up to 17 currencies. That includes the 15 currencies of the MENA region and then the dollars and the euro. We then have a multi-language call center, which is a unique selling point for our digital bank because most digital banks don't have call centers but we have a 24-hour multi-language call center. Uh, we have an instant accounting card and uh, digital registration using an ID and a selfie. Another feature is a contactless payment uh, using rings, which was supposed to be in the video, but I'll show it at the end. And there is a local and international money transfer within seconds. This is how you register. You scan your national ID, take a selfie, and you get verified and uh, registered, and you get your bank account straight away. We have three different memberships. The first one is bronze, which is free for everyone. You get a virtual card, and there's a transaction charge of 2%. The second membership is the silver membership, where you get a ring, a uh, NFC ring, and that's a one-time payment of 300 rounds. Um, for the crystal membership, it's a one-time payment of 300 dirhams where you get your ring and then a monthly payment of 45 dirhams, which gives you extra benefits such as lounge access at airports and many other benefits. So the target market uh, for each membership, we're able to find this using uh, focus groups, is that the bronze, which is the lowest membership, our target market is immigrant blue-collar workers who often send money back home, who are just looking for a banking solution that is very simple and gives them a simple way of sending money back home without extra and hidden charges. For our silver membership, 
It's for students and young adults looking to open their first bank account. And for Crystal, it's for people uh, of luxury lifestyles and who are looking for a VIP banking experience. This won't be their main bank account. However, it'll be the bank account they use on day-to-day -day spending. Um, through research, we found that 156,000 people fit our early adopters criteria. The market worth of the uh, digital banks and challenge challenger banks in the MENA region is hit to, um, expected to hit 27.23 billion by 2023. And our market access of Jordan and the UAE is uh, 19 million people. This is the financial forecast. So on the first year, we're uh, forecasted to hit break even. And uh, on the second year, we're hoping to make a profit or we're forecasted to hit a profit of 1.7 million drums. And that's uh, from second to third year, there's a 335% growth. And from third to fourth year, there'll be a 13% growth. We're currently in the pre-seed pre investment round and we're asking for 500,000 dirhams, which is 110,000 pounds in return for 3% equity. This is the team, so I'm the founder. We have Ammar Hattab, which is the financial director for the Royal Family in Dubai. He is our financial strategic mentor and Hyperlink Infosystems, which is the web and app development uh, company we're working with right now. Thank you. We're uh, hoping to hit the UE markets by January 2021 and the Jordan market by December 2021. Right. Uh, to see if we can work the video or not. Uh, it seems to be quite heavy. If you can try to share your screen, I'm not, I'm not yeah. sure if you're able. Yes, you can check it out and uh, we will try to, to make it. Yep. Yeah. Even try. Let's let's make it work. Let's try. Uh, uh, please, can you explain us regarding this ring, how this ring works? Um, yeah, so the ring has a GPS locator inside of it and an NFC chip. The GPS locator is to connect to the app, so you're able to monitor your ring in case you lose it, and you're able to find any discounts that are near you. The NFC ring works similar to a credit card where you just scan your ring when you want to pay, or when you want to transfer money to your friends, you're able to touch each other's rings for three seconds and you transfer money to each other using your app. And yeah, that's basically how it works. Right. Uh, so basically it's uh, like you don't have to open your app or even you, you just have a ring and you can tap and pay anything you want to, right? Yeah, basically just like a credit card, but instead of a credit card, it's a uh, wearable technology. Great. Uh, well, uh, Yazan, thanks a lot. Now the feedback. Um, if you don't mind, uh, let me introduce Lars. Uh, Lars, uh, please uh, join us and uh, please uh, give us the feedback or any comments or questions. Uh, I'm just, uh, if you can double check your camera and uh, join us and uh, please give us the feedback about the pitch, any comments, what to improve from investment perspective. Um, how to make it better or any any feedback so far or any questions, uh, please, uh, Lars, we're just waiting for you. Yes. Can you see me now? Yes. All good. Excellent. Well, I know a song from before because obviously we met in the old Founders Lab. Um, so uh, we uh, I'm acquainted with CoinGo. Um, I think... Uh, I think the main I think the main issue will be uh, how are you gonna uh, create a wedge into the MENA market because in Europe you have a very 
uh, you know, very saturated market right now with the neo banks, uh, the category which you go under, the challenger banks. Um, I think the MENA region is still untapped, uh, but for you guys, it's really important to figure out, okay, what are the key differentiators uh, that can help us really take advantage of this? Uh, is it your local knowledge of the region? Because I know, I know you're from there as well. So um, I think you really have to sort of leverage your, your uh, local network and your local uh, community there to really figure out what is it that the European challenger banks, such as Revolut, N26, Starling, etc., Monzo. Uh, what are they doing in Europe that wouldn't work in Mina? But what do we know about Mina that we can do there, uh, so that we can really become the main one there? Uh, another thing, I think, from my investment perspective, it needs to be really clear uh, with your financials. Obviously, I haven't seen them, so I don't know what the projections are. But I think it's very unlikely to break even in the first year, especially if you want to grow. Um, so I definitely have a look at those and I wouldn't expect anyone to break even in the first three, four, five years, especially if you're on a sort of a very high growth uh, strategy uh, and the profits, you know, this is everyone always underestimates with the uh, costs. So I would rather much rather see uh, financials where you overestimate your costs. Uh, because that means that if someone actually invests in you uh, and you perform better than your projections, great. Uh, but now, if you're having very optimistic uh, projections, it's very easy to disappoint. Uh, so that means that you always have to over-deliver, uh, which can be hard sometimes, uh, because everything always takes five times as long as you want them to in the startup world. Uh, other than that, I mean, I think uh, Stefan mentioned earlier, uh, maybe during this time we're in now, maybe you want to revisit the valuation and see sort of what type of offers you can get. Um, obviously, because this is um, uh, a pre-revenue uh, a startup, uh, especially also because it's a digital bank, um, I would probably see if there's any way you can sort of be flexible on that to to attract an investor early on because the sooner you get the money the sooner you can start growing and the sooner you can start growing the sooner you can build a track record the sooner you can build a track record the easier it is to attract more money later so definitely in the first few funding rounds you might want to give a huge discount so that you can get more money quicker but anyway right. it's good. and i love the ring it's a it's a great a great feature thank you uh, uh laura's I'll have a revolut ring <laughs> uh lars uh thanks a lot for joining us and uh, now i would like to invite alexander piskunov uh, from uh, san francisco from america and uh what i would like to ask uh alexander first of all your feedback regarding this speech if there is something like this exist in america already any devices like rings or any any you know type of products like that and uh, your feedback, your comments, is it something you can uh, find attractive for American market? And your overview, uh, please, Alexander, give us overview, um, you know, what's going on in American market right now in tech and uh, what startup founders should focus right now. Any comments regarding this? Alexander, we are waiting for you. Um, I just uh, want to make sure uh, you, can, uh, you can speak. I just made you presenter. So, uh, yes, we are waiting for your uh, feedback. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'll switch on my camera as well then. Yes, please. Uh, hi, guys. Um, yes, so, I mean, I definitely don't think that having just a string is unique. Uh, and I agree uh, that, you know, you really have to think about your competitive advantage because you're not the first uh, challenger bank out there. And your needs are the first in the MENA region, so you definitely uh, have to better present uh, to investors, to your potential clients, as to what your unique competitive advantage is. And also, since you're quite early stage, I uh, found it quite peculiar that you haven't really uh, spoke at length about your background, because at early stages, angels and syndicates often invest in the entrepreneur and his idea rather than the traction, which you uh, don't have at the moment. And uh, yeah, I mean, what else I think? I think that uh, it, it will be good if you can explain your uh, strategy for expansion because you mentioned Jordan. Uh, and I was uh, surprised by that because, you know, Jordan is um, in the region, but it's, it's not one of the first countries uh, that you would want to aim towards because the uh, buying power uh, especially for the fintech space is quite small in comparison to the bigger countries like uh, uae for example uh, 
at least from my own opinion, uh, of investing in this region. So uh, what else? I think that um, when you gave a forecast, it would have been quite helpful if you could have justified all the figures that you've presented. And if you gave uh, some inf information regarding the markets, uh, something like the sources which you used to generate the data, because there are a lot of sources and each of them uh, can tell you completely different things. Um, yeah, so that's regarding the presentation. Now let me uh, give you a quick intro uh, about myself as well, I guess. So I am a partner at uh, Venture Capital Fund called Venture Ventures. We invest out of Singapore and out of San Francisco in the field of frontier tech. So these are things like robotics, artificial intelligence, uh, new materials, mobility, and quantum computing. So normally there are uh, deep tech fields out there and uh, we are looking uh, towards the earlier stages of investments of seed stage, uh, Series A, uh, even though we do have quite a lot of portfolio companies which have already uh, grown up beyond that, and we are following up on them uh, in due time. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess in terms of a brief introduction, that's about it, but I'd be most happy to engage with the audience and answer any questions you guys may have, or Yazan, if you have anything specific that you'd like to ask, uh, more than happy to clarify as well, I guess. Uh, Alexander, one more question. Uh, if you don't mind, give us a brief situation of American market as well. Um, uh, what startup founders should look at right now? Um, how to approach investors? Is it the right time or we need to wait for a while? And which sectors you find attractive? A part of robotics, a part of ad tech, a part of med tech, any other directions to consider for entrepreneurs? Well, to be honest, I would argue that actually robotics is not a good sector to invest in at the moment because robotics has already been um, very hard and very expensive for producing prototypes. But anyway, so I think that at the moment, if you are an investor who wants to uh, get a bargain deal, you should look at the startups which are feeling quite poorly. So startups in travel tech, because nobody uh, goes out, they all sit at home like I do, right? Or something to do with hospitality. So things to do with hotels, uh, things to do with catering and similar aspects. But if you uh, want to aim for the future, then I would definitely uh, advise you to invest or start up a company in uh, online services or so something that used to be offline before, like, for example, um, legal services or uh, like instead of restaurants now, there are a lot of delivery services or instead of like going out to meet your date now, it's Tinder and online dating, right? So everything moves online. And um, a big point about that is that um, people use them before, but now they're stuck at home, now they're bored and they will get used uh, to the apps that they are using. They will understand that, yes, it's far more convenient to order delivery rather than go to the restaurant. So um, once the coronavirus panic goes away, some trends will persist. And yeah, I guess the last thing that I wanted to mention in terms of sectors, which are really hot at the moment, is obviously med tech, right? Because, well, coronavirus is not the first and neither is the last because there used to be swine flu, bird flu, Spanish flu, the bubonic plague and whatnot. And the um, startups who try to disrupt the space were around since at least the 2000s. But uh, only nowadays, because of such a huge attention paid by the governments, such a huge attention paid uh, by large corporations who are trying to uh, change parts of their production lines to produce things like sanitizers or masks to sort of help combat the spread of the epidemic. Now the world is starting to understand how important the med tech technologies really are. So if you have a product which has to do with innovative drug design or something to do with genetic testing or similar things, uh, it's definitely going to be um, a better place to be in if you want to raise investments than before. Because med tech, uh, like robotics, is a very uh, long-term and R&D heavy field. And you have to get a lot of certifications, for example, in America from FDA, because you're dealing with human lives. And only once you get the certifications, then you have to do animal testing, human testing. And once you release, release this product onto the market, you're basically in the money. But it takes a long time. So most of the med tech funds uh, who invest 
uh, as those who have significant number of PhDs in very specific fields, like, I don't know, quantum biology, uh, molecular physics and similar things, as I can understand uh, all the innovations going on from both theoretical and practical viewpoints. Alexander, thanks a lot. Uh, pleasure. Stay with us in chat. Uh, I see so many questions in uh, YouTube and our chat. Um, uh, we definitely uh, pass uh, to all our requests these questions and all of these questions will be answered after the session. Feel free to, to comment right afterwards. Uh, uh, one more uh, comment regarding the pitch uh, by Azan from Kevin. Kevin, please uh, join us and give us your thoughts about the pitch deck, how to improve, and uh, maybe, you know, uh, what did you like as well, um, and how to uh, make pitch deck more attractive for investors. What's your thoughts? Please tell us your, your feedback and uh, welcome. Good evening. Um, double check your sound uh, because okay. I just want. Yes, and I'm getting familiar with the platform. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Good evening, everybody. Um, hello again, Izan. Uh, okay, so from my perspective as a business coach, I'm interested in in the team angle. Um, so I'm wondering, is it just you and the co-founder? If I was putting myself in an investor's position. I'd like to know um, what's your what is the composition of your team. I'd like to understand the diversity of your team. Um, I think that's that's crucial because that brings in a range of thinking and avoids the group thinking, which narrows down the design approach uh, and the range of um, uh, the range of um, of uh of diversity of thought so something about that but also your your advisors who who's actually supporting you on this journey you want to sort of create that um multi-dimensional feel to the team rather than it's just two two young guys no no offense on the thing, but you can actually it would help to bolster that um and particularly if somebody with financial financial a financial background one other part of that is what about um regulatory checks and bodies you know in the uk it's fca the fca is there an equivalent body in the middle east have you already do you have those in place did i miss that in the deck i'm not sure i'm not sure i saw that so we've already passed all uh, regulation in dubai with the credit bureau which allowed us to be registered in the UE right now, so we are currently registered and we have passed the uh, passed the regulation. We're just developing the platform right now. Yeah, and is that is that done on a per country basis, or is there one license? Yeah, so there's one license in the UE and a different license in Jordan. Yeah, I, I see. So they're your two target markets for now. Um, what else do I have to share? Uh, yeah, I think that's it actually. There's quite a lot has been covered already. I hope that's helpful. Yeah, very helpful. Thank you. Kevin, thanks a lot for joining yeah. us. I will get back to you. Feel free to stay with us in chat. And as, as I mentioned before, there are a bunch of the, the questions. Yadan, thanks a lot for your presentation. Uh, as we have the pitch uh, investment pitch day in 28th of May, this is, was example of a pitch in order to see what we can improve, what are the expectations from investors, and as you see the bunch of the comments uh, here, and feel free to ask uh, later on any uh, more feedback and uh, comments. Um, ladies and gentlemen, le let me give you, I guess, again, a bit of um, uh, insights uh, about the investments. Um, as we discussed about the type of investors and types of uh, funding like angel uh, vc fund investments grants and other options and also loans uh, which i discussed before that is probably not the good option uh, before actually you become a sustainable company and uh, then some some bits of uh, insights regarding investment terms and conditions 
So uh, startup equity structure, I guess, again, uh, Stepan, Lars, uh, all our requests, um, uh, please uh, fix me or uh, make any comments. The, the more simple star, uh, uh, startup equity uh, structure, the better. Um, uh, please make it clear. And I think it's great where you can uh, showcase uh, this equity structure during your uh, pitch deck. Um, so I saw the comments from Stepan uh, that if you make a first fundraising round, don't give more than 30% of equity at first fundraising round, 100% agree. And I think what is very important as well is to keep control uh, of uh, shares as, as long as possible across the, the rounds. And if you have the first rounds of your investments, uh, please try to keep your equity more than 50% uh, or as, as more as possible. And um, it's good if you, if you can showcase um, uh, how much equity uh, you've got as a CEO or a CTO or a CMO or some other positions. And also, if you have the previous investment rounds, if you can show which investor um, you know, how much uh, each investor got so far, 10% equity or some advisors and some, some team members and so on. So as clear as possible, and just to make sure, again, you have the majority of shares, what is very important and why it's actually is very important to do not lose, um, you know, uh, equity quicker uh, because, um, if you have, let's say, as a startup founder, only 5% of equity and you just did a seed round, uh, what the motivation you've got to move the company? So what investors uh, want to see is uh, your motivation and motivation of startup team by having the majority of shares and majority of equity. So there is no point to uh, for investor to take uh, more than... I don't know, 50% at uh, investment, uh, angel investment rounds. And then angel uh, has, a, you know, the majority of shares. So what, how to motivate startup team to, to make the progress and come through all these tough uh, rounds. So I think, again, if you can pre uh, present how many, um, how much equity all of your, um, you know, um, team members got so far and some previous investors during a uh, presentation on your pitch deck is great. And uh, types of investors, definitely there are different types of uh, expectations and strategy. Uh, uh, please, uh, I guess it's a right answer to, uh, right question to ask why some investor uh, uh, wants to invest into your company. What's the reason? Is it like a quick return or some strategical thinking? So there are different types of investors. Someone who wants to invest money into your company and forget for maybe next uh, few years. And some uh, investors who uh, wants to um, actively participate in your company life, maybe giving you advice, helping you with connections, uh, bringing company to the next level. And uh, you definitely can meet some short-term investors, uh, probably those who just want to get quick return on investments. Now, also some investors who, you know, are uh, probably looking for long term and they would wait for IPO or margin or acquisition and they would uh, wait for really, um, you know, a long term uh, outcome of the deal. And some strategical investors who maybe did uh, previous uh, investments into similar companies or companies uh, which are part of your supply chain or which are uh, connecting to your startup idea somehow. So please try to identify which type of investor you're dealing with and uh, which one you, 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 know, you, you want to see. And it's great if you can create um, the portrait of investor you're trying to find uh, across of your network. Are you looking for someone with quick money and someone not involved uh, in your company life or someone helping you? Uh, let's, uh, there is a term, uh, I guess uh, most of you know about that uh, called smart money. So a lot of uh, startup founders now looking for not only for capital, but also for extra support, for connections, for um, industry knowledge, for uh, possibility to bring company to the next level by having all of these uh, contacts. And uh, meeting expectations is very important also 
Uh, imagine you, uh, you know, you got investment rounds or you're just about to make a deal. It's very important to clarify all the targets and objectives. What are you planning to deliver after investment rounds, you know, uh, closed? And uh, please uh, try to clarify as clear as possible to, um, you know, what, what, what's, what's the plan. And please don't try to overpromise. And uh, please don't put uh, overestimation of your projections if you're not quite sure. And as you know, um, I believe some startup founders, uh, they uh, probably were uh, very optimistic about 2020, but now maybe the few months of this year are quite tough. So again, uh, please uh, take a look um, at some possible risks and uh, don't overpromise regarding the expectations and uh, create a clear plan and execution plan. Um, uh, create a clear target and keep your eyes. Uh, and also, uh, please uh, follow a great uh, business strategy. And uh, I think uh, what is very important is to, uh, doesn't really matter if it's a passive or active investor is to have a regular communication flow with your investors. Uh, have like, a, I don't know, a phone calls, uh, some uh, meetups, discussion, what's going on in your company. And I think it's extremely important to remember that even uh, something goes wrong, please make a call or please inform your investors as quick as possible rather than uh, trying to hide uh, till last moment uh, if there is anything goes not exactly, not as you planned. So it's better to say that something is not uh, happening uh, two months before actually you have some summary meeting or um, uh, you know uh, some some kind of the check check uh, checking the milestones uh, report rather than uh, saying it at the very last uh, moment. And as I said, uh, regarding the meeting expectations, please clean uh, create a clear roadmap regarding your startup. What's um, the plan? Uh, what are you planning to reach uh, in 2020 in these few years regarding the product development, marketing and sales, uh, business development? Are you planning to reach more funds, uh, you know, um, later on this year? Are you planning to bootstrap after you, uh, you know, uh, you got your product development? What's the strategy? And please discuss with your investors. What do you think about the future of your company? And explain them. How do you see the strategy regarding your company development? And uh, please also clarify the ownership of rights and assets, which is very important uh, to remember. And uh, please take a look beyond your just financial assets. And uh, what do I mean that uh, please uh, make a registration of brands and trademark and uh, also investors, uh, they can ask who is owner of your product, who is owner of code, who owns the brand name, trademark and some other assets uh, like uh, social media accounts, uh, like a domain name and so on. I know the example when um, a company was sold for more than one million uh, pounds and after uh, the buyer realized that actually all the company assets registered to the founder and uh, by uh, according to uh, agreements, actually, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, the buyer just gets a company name. There is no any assets related to company uh, according to the agreement. And it's very important to clarify who is on owner of uh, all the assets and also across your team. If you have a team of two, three, please clarify uh, and make sure your assigns that, uh, you know, probably equal or the same uh, ownership of all the assets you've got. And... Um, Exit strategy, I know one quote and uh, one uh, in, um, investor said, I'm not investing into company if I don't understand exit. So uh, please explain uh, what's, uh, what's the plan and how the exit strategy looks like for a startup founder and uh, also and uh, uh, you know uh, see uh, how it works and uh, just... Um, yeah, exit strategy. And uh, please uh, protect uh, yourself and your assets regarding your exit. Uh, so um, uh, check out uh, when you do exit as a startup founder or also investors. Uh, please check uh, if you keep your equity or if you um, uh, own any intellectual property. Do you get cash when you exit from the company? Uh, or do you have any limitations of... Um, 
uh, do you, uh, after you, you leave in the company. Please write down all exit strategy and uh, ask our investors how do they deal regarding, how do they describe exit strategy in their investment agreements. Um, um, yeah, I, I agree, but I think it's very important also to clarify regarding your uh, team, you know, uh, to agree with your team. What is the exit strategy? How are you planning? Are you going to IPO or are you um, uh, trying to, you know, exit in 10 years time and maybe sell the company? Uh, what, what's the plan? And I think it's, it's important to align your understanding of each uh, startup founder um, what are you going to do? And if you live in the company, if all startup founders live in the company, in worst case scenario, uh, maybe some, um, you know, milestones not reached or what's happening. Um, yes, but feel free to comment. And um, I think it's just uh, from my perspective, it's extremely important to clarify with your startup team and at least to discuss uh, what's your, uh, what's your uh, vision. And uh, what is the hidden side of investment? Please, I have to say about this. And uh, please uh, let me say these words uh, probably um, and not uh, every time we speak about this. But uh, what is important to remember that um, startup development is a startup marathon in of five, 10 years long. So, um, so please, it's very important to understand that it's something you build for an, a long run. And uh, it's extremely important to remember that uh, there are some ups and downs and some backsides of investments. And um, I remember of uh, one of my, uh, you know, um, colleagues, my uh, entrepreneurs I know across my context, he said, I've got one meal investment, but I got one meal of responsibilities. Uh, so please remember about that. And uh, you also um, can have a risk of uh, spinning a red view where you probably can realize that actually it's a very tough uh, pressure on you regarding delivering the KPIs and targets. And also, uh, I, I'm meeting some entrepreneurs who are considering, uh, you know, just a strategy of having round by rounds, uh, I don't know, each six months time and without any profit. So my question uh, please make sure you don't have dependency on investment injections and you able to generate some actual revenue. And I believe that probably this current situation will, um, you know, uh, help to remove this bubble of startup with no any revenue or no profit or no any financial outcome, but uh, uh, getting a lot of, um, you know, f you know, investments and uh, running the companies and get crazy valuation amounts with no any outcome, financial outcome. And uh, please remember that uh, when you get investment, you dilute your um, equity. And also uh, please check out what's the reason of investor, why do they in invest in your company? Maybe they wanna make merging or acquisition. So uh, please check out and make a research um, why this is actually happening. And uh, investment rounds uh, can change people in your team and it also can change the attitude and habit or maybe the expectations. Maybe by getting some investment rounds, you need to relocate to a certain country or city and you get some stress. So again, uh, please make sure you keep uh, work-life balance and you understand that taking investment is not only, you know, um, great opportunity, it's a high responsibility for you as a startup founder. And uh, what we discussed is that um, uh, please research about investors, check traction background, and uh, please make sure you have a trust in between and you uh, figure out, um, you know, legally what's your protection of uh, across your um, assets and uh, your personal protection and your business one. And please have a very clear equity and uh, investment agreement structure. And uh, please make a research on Google Crunchbase, LinkedIn, Companies House. And I think it's uh, extremely important to uh, make, as we discussed, the research online and make sure you deal with people you trust. And uh, just um, a last uh, last comment before we actually come in uh, to Q&A session and uh, summarizing our insights today. 
people invest in people, not in startups. So especially at early stage. So please make sure you got this uh, chemistry in between uh, with your investors and uh, you see the trust um, in, in your communication flow and you see interest and engagement. And you probably uh, will uh, have to see your investor next uh, five, 10 years of your life. So please make sure it's a pleasant experience um, of having these investors on board. And uh, it's not only, you know, good uh, deal in terms of, um, you know, financial indicators, but also good, good deal on personal level. And uh, yes, now, if you don't mind, uh, I will ask uh, to connect a few our requests. Uh, um, uh, please, uh, Carl, and uh, a few more people to summarize our session and uh, uh, give um, give the final comments to our uh, attendees and our uh, guests before we select the best question of 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 this session. Carl, I just made you presenter. Carl, um, your insights, any comments about uh, today's session? Um, any advice to startup founders who are just about to find investment, what they should focus on and how to make sure they find the right investor for their startup and please make introduction of yourself uh, to our audience. Okay. Good evening. Thank you, Slava. Good evening. Good evening. It's, it, I hope you can see me okay. It's gone dark now, but it was, it was nice and bright earlier on. But uh, it's good to be with everybody, and it's been an interesting conversation. Actually, I'll just pick up on your last slide. You said about people buying people, and uh, that's very connected to what I was thinking about because also I would say people buy purpose sometimes. You know, it's it's or you know in these times, and even before it got really difficult with coronavirus. You know, investors. When we think about the empathy of the investors, there's a lot of people pitching them. And so they get fatigue of, you know, how many more decks are they going to see? So one of the things is I completely agree that they they look for what's what's this person like? You know, what makes them tick? So what makes them tick is, you know, why the why? So if there's any uh, feedback for uh, Taz and uh, Yasm um, from earlier on as well, it's, he said, OK, we're a digital banking solution, which is kind of the what or the maybe the how, but it wasn't really the why. Why does he get up in the morning? And how can you make that become something that somebody's going to really be engaged and interested in? Uh, one of the other things that can help with getting that point across, um, and if anybody wants to do research into this, is neuromarketing, which is something where, you know, he touched on it when, when we did like problem, this is the problem and this is the solution uh, that we're solving. But if we go into that in a bit more detail, it's like, really telling the story you know investors love to be told stories if, if it's a nice way of engaging uh you know about a, you know what what someone's background is or why the company actually came to exist and within that there can be this uh you know thing about um i was going to say about um well yeah basically you know why why, why does the company uh exist so i think I've, I've lost my thread there a little bit but but it's, it's, it's the, oh yeah, so, so within neuromarketing, it's, it's really, a, you know, I think within the slides earlier and, and often when I see decks, it's that, that fascinating story of, okay, this is how things currently work. These are the kind of company, you know, so you can cover quite a lot of, you know, the competition or the, the way things are. This is how it works. Now, this is what we've done and this is how it could be in a brave new world and this is why we exist you know isn't it amazing and if you can't get somebody to think wow that's really amazing then you haven't really answered the passion point about why they'll buy into you so there's an energy thing i remember when we first spoke and we were both kind of acknowledging you know okay we've got some background here we connected on an uh, on a you know a, an energy level we were excited about what could happen so when we talk to investors it's like whatever little levers you can pull and obviously you do that, Richard made some great points earlier about research the people you're going to be in front of before you even approach them. But when you've got a, you know, a half hour call with them, you don't have to give them detailed slides for a half hour call. You need to give them something that's going to excite them. And then they want to get to know you as a person, exactly like you just said. So you want to bring your personality, you want to bring your passion, and then you want to bring your purpose. And I wasn't planning to do three Ps, but, but there you go. It's, it's those three things, you know. Um, yeah. Any any uh, other questions after that? Or um, I think that's really the the core cool things I wanted to say. 
Well, as, as I mentioned before, we, we got a bunch of questions and I will ask you our uh, guest uh, to answer later on. Uh, yeah. Carl, thanks a lot. We're quite limited with time, but uh, I, I, I'm really enjoying the conversation and it's, it's incredible that we connected so many, um, you know, entrepreneurs, investors and, uh, you know, guests uh, from multiple countries. If you don't mind, I will invite... Um, Andre Kalenchuk, uh, he uh, last year, Andre, uh, he did a fundraising round uh, for his startup. Andre, if you don't mind, uh, share us your comments, how to become attractive uh, startup for investments. What is the success factor points and what advice you can give to entrepreneurs who just about to fundraise or uh, who are looking for fundraising this year in particular? Please uh, tell us your thoughts. Um, any any comments so far, please. I cannot hear. You. Maybe you can double check your microphone, please. Um, yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so I'm Rick Kalinchuk, I'm CEO and the founder of Quest Hunter, a marketplace for escape rooms. Uh, we closed our first round. About a year ago, um, yeah, we we raised 180k from great angels, and that was challenging. But I suppose that the first uh, funding round uh, is challenging most of the times. Um, yeah, this this year for us uh, is going to be a bit tough because of the coronavirus situation. Because we are in the entertainment sector, which is uh, absolutely frozen right now, uh, but I hope to like first of all we spend this time to add um, to expand our platform and to add a lot of online features, and we are going to start fundraising around once the the whole situation is going like more to normal <laughs> than, than now, but I suppose that this uh, year will be um, will be tough for new investments. Uh, some of your guests today mentioned this already, and yeah, as we saw so far, um, investors prefer to support their current portfolio that make new investments, uh, but I think that uh, once the, the virus situation is um, going to end, uh, there will be more investors around and they will be try to uh, catch an opportunity because um, like demand is still high for, for investors. So they will be trying to catch um, this demand with uh, um, better valuations. Um, yeah, this is my opinion. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, one one straightforward question. So, what do you think was successful factor? Why uh, you got investment round from investor? What do you think? Uh, you know, was this uh, hint? Uh, you know, some some kind of the magic bullet uh, you you had in your pocket? Uh, I don't think that there is a magic bullet here. It's more. It's more, um, it's more an art than, uh, than the science, I think. Um, but yeah, first of all, um, it is better to invest your own money first. Um, then it's better to approach to your network. It's better to have investments from your network. Once you have um, good, um, good investors, as I said, for example, we got uh, on board really good angel investors. And um, this actually helps you um, later. And the main, the, main, the, the main step to get on board good investors, and this is um, a tricky thing. And I don't think that there is a magic bullet. Like you do need to have a good presentation. You do need to sell yourself and um, your project. You do need to 
approach to really big crowd you do need a lot of practice and so yeah that's that's an art I, I like the, your, your word is is an art rather than science uh andrew thanks a lot and as i said i will pass the questions from our um attendees from uh youtube and from this uh click meeting session uh, we have the winner for our questions, the best uh, question, um, uh, the best question uh, of this session is uh, uh, made by Juliana. Juliana, thanks a lot for your questions today. You are the winner of this session with your best question. And now I need to tell what exactly, uh, you know, what is the price? Uh, so the price is um, on the 28th of November 2020, we have the first international film festival about startups. So you get uh, free tickets to this uh, gala award ceremony of a film festival about startups. Uh, please leave your email. We will contact you and send you the invitation to, to, to join this uh, amazing uh, first ever international film festival about startups. So you get a free ticket. And a uh, few comments, a uh, few comments about what's next. Uh, before I would ask uh, to our uh, special guests today, Stepan and Richard, to summarize and to give us uh, just the last uh, one minute comments regarding the current situation and also, you know, what we should all do now this year and how to survive in this uh, situation and maybe how startups can become better before they actually join in your calls and uh, trying to reach you. What startups should improve uh, during the pitch days? Uh, Stepan, I'll connect you and uh, Richard, I'll connect you as well. Uh, before, let me say you a few things. Um, uh, what's next? Uh, so next, uh, we have a uh, session next week. Uh, we have a session about the business strategy and sales for a tech startup, especially in terms of the current situation, how to make it work, uh, what to do, and uh, all the all the brainstorming about the strategy of sales and uh, business uh, next week, uh, next Thursday. In two weeks time, we speak how to win a pitch uh, startup win, um, how to win a startup pitch competition. So please join us in two weeks time. And 30th of April, we speak about technologies and product development for a tech startup. And uh, 28th of May, investment pitch day, 100% online session. So uh, please uh, check out our Elegant Club website and see. So as I mentioned, the winner of the session today is Juliana and Richard. And Stepan, can you summarize and give us the last mm -hmm. comments, uh, what we should do now and how to focus on in order to become attractive startups, maybe not for right now, uh, but uh, later on after the current situation will we'll come better, will become better. Richard. Thanks, Slava. Uh, it's been a very interesting presentation. Yeah, I, I, I was very interested in Yezan's uh, deck. Um, I'm not sure what uh, how I can comment on this really. Um, interesting times all around. Uh, I'm I'm an angel investor rather than an institutional investor. Um, for me, it's very exciting times um, through personal networking and contacts and so forth. My commitment into startups is relatively small, um, and so I'm enjoying the the peace and quiet at the moment to to have the time to research thoroughly uh, the, the startup plans uh, the cash flows uh, projections etc cetera, etc cetera, and really get to know the people I'm working with um, I, I I find it very exciting at the moment um, but uh, I don't want to revel in uh, at a time like this when um, there are more serious concerns out there. Right, uh, Stepan, uh, your comments, uh, maybe mm -hmm. what uh, startups should focus on uh, in, during the, the current situation, as Richard mentioned, maybe to research more about investors or maybe do uh, more uh, R&D and maybe prepare better before they actually send you any pitch deck or before they actually trying to reach you. What's your advice to startup founders, what they should focus on? Mm. Well, we, we tell everyone, 
to spend uh, the, the, the time at the moment to focus on what they do best. So if you had a product, to a certain degree ready or not, uh, try to polish it to <laughs> absolute perfection and, and then strike for, for, for money. Rather than if you start chasing new opportunities right now, I think that's not, not the right time. Right. Uh, and again, um, what do you think? Uh, is the autumn is becoming more active in, in terms of the investments? Uh, what do you expect in the autumn time? Are we expecting more investment deals in the industry? Mm -hmm. what's, what's going to happen? Uh, well, our, our forecast is quite doom and gloom. <laughs> we, we're thinking of double-digit GDP contraction in the UK and in most countries around the world. Uh, angel money will dry out by 75%, so, so it's, not, it's not that optimistic. And I don't think it, it, will, uh, it will improve in six months' time. I think it's probably 12 months away. But the deals will be done, and they will be done on the terms of the investors. Uh, th that's that's the theme of the moment. So the, uh, the the cash is king. We're back to that mantra <laughs> more than ever before. People with cash, they'll be dictating what's going to happen. Right. Yes, that's very true. Um, Clearly, I'm looking with a slightly different eye over proposals these days than I than I was perhaps a month or two months ago. Mm. Um, and I, I particularly want to make sure that the, the businesses I'm interested in have got suitable contingency plans in place. Will they survive the next few months through to September, for example? Um, and what is the balance going to be when life gets back to normality? Um, and how fast is that normality going to return? Um, how are they going to um, take advantage of, of, of the bounce that will occur? Are they well positioned for that? Or should I be looking at other opportunities? Um, as someone mentioned earlier, people's um, habits will be reformed slightly, reinformed by the current sort of uh, confinement strategy of all these uh, countries around Europe and beyond. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, I, time for reflection. Time for reflection, uh, time for making uh, your product as best as you can uh, before actually you're uh, trying to reach uh, Stepan or Richard or some other investors. Um, across the globe. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for this session. It's a big pleasure to have all of you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, please stay online. And as I mentioned before, all the answers uh, to your questions will be published on Allegiant Club website uh, shortly. So uh, thank you very much again. And um, see you next week. Uh, we're going to speak about the business strategy and sales. And I'm I'm leaving. Uh, I'm finishing the session, and it was enjoyable, a uh, great time. And thanks a lot for for all your questions, your answers, your contribution to the session. It was amazing. I'm I'm finishing the session, and uh, thank you very much for 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 coming. Uh, amazing times. Stay tuned.